Good afternoon. Namaste. Thank you for inviting me and thank you, Dr. Liu, for the opportunity. Now, um, the topic of my presentation is music and memory, uh, which is a topic of a two semester seminar I hope for the last seven years at the uh, postgraduate school and uh, Department of Psychology, University of Turin. So today I will make a very short introduction to the introduction to the introductory part of this uh, issue. Because it's a complex issue, music, memory, like consciousness, are complex phenomena. So uh, the relationships between two complex phenomena are very complex in itself. And in this case, music and memory, we have to deal with, first of all, with anatomy and physiology, biology, uh, molecular biology, psychology, psychiatry, pharmacology, neuropharmacology, physics, and above all, with the laws and rules of the music science. Uh, the science could be very entertaining, but it still remains a science, and music is a science. Now, uh, memory. Being a complex phenomenon, the definitions are as approaches. So you have, but generally, the memory is uh, the mental faculty of retaining and recalling past experience. Uh, me uh, memory is essential for the human being, for our existence, because it's at the base of whatever mental process, starting with, starting with learning. Learning supposed memory. And the disturbs of memory, Alzheimer's disease or dementia, I will talk about at the end of this presentation, are, are killing us. Now, oh, there are models of memory, different models. What I'm using as a base of my therapy, which I will introduce briefly, is the hologramic uh, model, uh, presented for the first time in the 70s uh, by Carl Friedman. Hologramic means you would see exactly what it means. Now, this is a very short presentation of two models of memory, which starting with the idea that memory is learned information which has to be encoded, stored, and retried. And we have from this point of view, we have two encoding mechanics, mechanisms. The declarative or explicit, what we learn in school, by separating the memory of details from learning proced procedures. The other one is not declarative or implicit, which is independent of conscious thought. Learning a skill, for example, how to play a musical instrument, or how to ride a bicycle, and making associations. This is non-declarative. Now, there are three types of memory, short-term, short-term, medium-term, and long-term. And this is the uh, mechanic, basic mechanic, immediate memory is seconds, short term of minutes, then intervene the, the process of consolidation, long term potenti potentiation, and that, that takes days, months, years. Now, a little example of chemical of how uh, the memory is formed in our brain. We are, we are talking about chemical fast receptors, which are transmitter gated ion channels in our brain, and they are ba based in three uh, substances, as called acetylcholine and glutamide. They're the, 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 the main, the most, uh, the most important. They are, they are only there. The, the two channels. Then we have the inhibitory postsynaptic <coughs> amino acids, GABA and glycine. And the glutamate for the 
fixation of, of memory, an MDA and MDA, which, which mediates the bulk of first excitatory synaptic transmission in the brain. Don't have time to, to show you that memory, but anyway. Not music, uh, excuse me, the technique. You are here? Okay. Leave it, leave it. Music enters here. This part. Uh, okay. Uh, we'll have until the end this background. I will tell you at the end what it's about. Who wants to meditate? If you feel to meditate, if you fix it on. Music enters at this point after the inhibitory postsynaptic process and the, in the uh, consolidation of the information on the glutamate chip by balancing. If the information is too much, let's put it in this way, it is divided. If it's too less, use it as this one. I pass on the biologist know this keep and the other things. I'm passing on this. The mechanics of uh, memory in uh, in mammals humans include the N, the NMD is, uh, stays for n methyl D. I don't know in English, anyway. Uh, it's a molecular signals which induce gene expression and protein synthesis, which uh, the structure changes on the neuron spine formation of the dendritus. It's, it's formed another dendritus. And this is structural plasticity. Music is the uh, most efficient way to have the neural plasticity. plasticity. And we know that cortex change with learning. When we learn something, we form the, uh, new spines on our neurons. Uh, for example, there are in neurogenesis, neurogenesis, the spine formation in hippocampal neurons uh, are greatly enhanced by the music. Now, this is a very interesting talk, scientific talk, to put it bluntly. Uh, when you learn, when you study, you used to put music, to listen to the music. That's why you are, you are listening to the music. Helps you understand and form and go to the memory, fix in the memory, the notions we are music. And you'll see what other things could be done. Now, let's talk about the absence of memory, the amnesia. It's an extinction of memory. A study at Emory University in 2005 that this I close the again, agonist, which is an agonist on MDA, which annihilates, tends to annihilate the, the effect of NMDA, increase the signal to the nucleus, increase the gene expression, and increase learning. And uh, this goes to a faster extinction of fixation of memory. And we have what is called amnesia. Amnesia is of two types, retrograde and integrate. Retrograde is I, I forget what I've learned. Integrate is I know that I will forget what I'm learning now. Briefly put. Now, memory is involving music. And this is an example of, uh, of a case published in uh, 2006 in Annals of General Psychiatry by uh, in, in England, in the UK. Okay, thank you.
that is the idea. Um, Is uh, is of a uh, person, 90 years old, in the third stage of Alzheimer. Alzheimer has three stages, and we talk together. First, second, second is usually the, 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 the stage where the people are conscious about the fact that they have Alzheimer. And the third stage, practically, it's a, it's a vegetable, it's a vegetable, um, um, a violent. Or they they harm themselves and attack the other. Not that was this uh, patient, third stage of Alzheimer. They uh, give them give her electroshock, and uh, after the end of the session of electroshock, in order to calm them, her down, she starts to sing perfectly with a perfect pronunciation all the lyrics. Music from the 40s, 94. She uh, continues to sing for 36 hours. 36 hours, then she dies. In uh, discussion, I uh, make a an hypothesis, and we have a very interesting discussion. Now, this patient in the 40s, 1940, was more or less 10, 10 years old. London, in 1940, was under the bombard bombardment of Germany. And they were living mostly in shelters. In shelter, each shelter has a speaker. <coughs> announce and during the bombardment there were music she was thinking all these pieces it was a person in third stage of Alzheimer is unable to formulate whatever they are, they are going with uh, with phonema <coughs> now this electroshock provoking mind of this uh, person, of this patient. Why? This is important. Have you seen movies? I know. You seen music, movies has a soundtrack. Say, ah. Okay. Now this sequence is made in movie by 24 or 36 photograms per second. It goes like now each of this is accompanied by the fragment of soundtrack. E, 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 e. Music is the soundtrack of our life. And indeed, often it's enough for you to hurt melody and you remember the first time you heard the melody the circumstances the person you, you were with even the smells why because according to hologramic theory that I contributed to, to, to develop this music music is fractal yeah. and music compositional techniques are set of rules to work with fractals. What is fractal? Fractal means that from a very small bit of information, I can recreate the information. That's why there is no place for memory in our body. All our body has memory. It's diffused. Each part of our body, each cell of our body, are containing a bit of information. No, it goes, who who studying physics, if you talk about memory, remember uh, Prigozhin and his uh, uh, isolated uh, systems. 
entropy of the system center. No time to go in all this. No. No time for this even. Just to tell another thing from point of view of physics. From the point of view of physics, music, as we listen to, is a pack of waves, of organized waves. Now, the moment we, we listen to both channels with both ears, now, the moment the information arrived at the thalamus, thalamus is the first dispatcher, whatever information comes. Moment information of the thalamus, this pack of waves collapse. And each component, which sub pack of waves, is sent by the mind to different points of the cortex. From the cortex, the information goes to the organism, which reacts. It's what I'm calling the brain, mind, brain, organ, BMBO mechanics which means the brain receives the information, the mind analyzes, decodifies, and analyzes the information, then send it to the brain, we send it to various parts of the organism. This is a feed-forward process. The organism in act responds with, with, with what is called a feedback. The process is continuous until the entropy, the cell flow of the thermodynamic enters and we obtain a new homeostasis, a new state of being. Yeah. Uh, now, I'm going to the end. So, um, based on this and other things, I established, starting 1978, a method of therapy called uh, Music Integrative Neurotherapy. It's a trademark registered in New Jersey, where I live in time, okay? Um, my method is, has as principle rewiring the mind in order to rewire the, the, rewire the brain and the organs. And I'm composing the music based on the medical data of each patient. I'm a psychiatrist specializing in mood, personality, and sleep disorders. And I'm a professional musician. I have a PhD in composition or just a composition. So I'm using the music as a science in medicine. Now, I came here, to, here in Hong Kong to work with uh, Giovanni Leon at, at, the, at the Polytechnic because he and his team made a very interesting application of ambisonics. I'm sorry we can't have the, the opportunity to show you, but it works. And to apply this, one minute, and to apply this in rehabilitation, mostly in Alzheimer rehabilitation, based on this uh, and other principles. That I'm sorry, 20 minutes is. Uh, a short time so but if you just input I don't I don't know how, how it's called Google in, in China but anyway make 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 a search on with my name and you'll find thank you very much.